So hi, Jackie. Um, I'm really happy to be here with you today. And uh, I'd just like to tell everybody that we're here to talk about um, purpose. But first, I'd really like to get to know a little bit about your story and a little bit about your experience with chronic illness, because this is about spoonies with purpose. And for anybody who doesn't know the term spoonies, it comes from um, uh, an article somebody wrote, Christine Miserando, uh, about the spoon theory, which is a way of describing how people with limited energy have to be careful about how they use their energy. So if you want to know more about that, please just research spoon theory because it, it, it'll come straight up on a Google search. Um, but yes, this we're, we're talking about living with limited energy, with, with chronic illness that limits your energy and how we can have some purpose in life, even when there are challenges like that. So Jackie. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, it's lovely to lovely to have you. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your experience with chronic illness and limited energy? I can indeed. Um, it's a it's quite a long story. Um, when I was 19 years old, I was working in a travel agent, and I just suddenly one day got a headache, and the headache just wouldn't go away, and um, I think it was about two weeks um, and I was going to work every day and uh, I just felt rotten. You know, there's no two ways about it. And my boss uh, basically got her son to drive me home one day because I was just too poorly. Um, and he dropped me off the top of the driveway that I, I in the house that I lived with my parents. And I walked down the driveway and my mum thought my mum was standing at the window and she said that she thought I was drunk. Oh dear. And um, I literally couldn't get my key in the door. So my mum came to the door all cross because she thought I was drunk. <laughs> and I literally fell through the door and I didn't get up for three months. My dad used to yeah. have to carry me downstairs and and stuff. And that was that was the beginning of my journey. And at the time, um, I was I was 19 years old. And uh, so we're talking 1989, yuppie flu. Yeah. Um, no doctor believed that you were ill. There was no tests to say that you had anything. So it took me three years to get a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. eventually my doctor very condescendingly said well I suppose I'll have to send you to a general therapist um, and that that general therapist was amazing and diagnosed the fact that I had what was called ME at the time it's grown into chronic fatigue syndrome and so on um, so that was the beginning of the journey um, and I have over 32 years now had times where I've been very well um, and times where I'm not so well. Yeah. Um, at 52 years old, I now am going through the dreaded menopause, mm -hmm. uh, which seems to have exacerbated my yeah. symptoms greatly. So um, I am, I'm okay. I can, I can live with it, um, but I do have days where I struggle. Um, but I've never allowed my um, illness to define who I am. Um, I can remember the consultant saying to me, that very first consultant saying to me, Jacqueline, you've got to decide whether you're going to have a working life or a social life. And um, my mum was really surprised because I said, oh, I'm going to work. Mm -hmm. Definitely going to work. Um, so I chose a working life over a social life. It's Don't such a shame that we have to, to make the those choices. Decision. I mean, I have had a social life and I, and I still do, but I'm very, obviously, 32 years in, um, I'm very careful about how I manage my time. Yeah. And I will go out if I know that I've got a day off the next day um, yeah. and so on and so forth. So it's all, to be perfectly honest, it's a manageable condition if you 
manage your time. It's time management. Yeah. It literally is time management and pacing. Um, yeah. Those are the things so, that have helped you. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I will not forego living life for having the condition that I've got. I just adapt my life to yeah. work with it. Yeah, I think I think that's that's the thing about chronic illness. We really need to be adaptive and and change change the way we approach life so that we can fit it in with with the energy that we do have and what what resources we do have available to us so um yeah so are there any any things that um you found that have particularly helped you over over the years that apart from the pacing and the um and the time energy management what what um self uh, uh, the biggest thing self-care 100 percent yeah um, but i only kind of that's very recent for me um back in uh 2018 my brother my little brother was getting married and i was four stone heavier than i am now i was a size 20 in clothes and the thought of being short the short fat well, all my family are quite tall and they're all very slim and the fear of being the short fat one in the photos kind of spurred me into trying to lose a bit of weight for the wedding I also have always dreamed of wearing a pantsuit I wanted a jumpsuit and I was always too large to wear one um so the 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 absolute drive was to at least lose a stone so that I could wear a nice dress for the wedding. Um, by the time the wedding had come, came round, in the space of nine months, I'd lost three and a half stone. Wow. So I was able to wear my dream outfit, which I felt amazing. Um, and then after that, I went on to lose another, um, another half stone. So four stone in general. Um, but that really started me thinking about self-care pro yeah. really properly um looking at how I looked after myself because I'd reached that goal and then I wanted to maintain it yeah and you so, can't stay on a diet forever so it's like so how am I how am I I've got myself to this this position now how do I look after myself so and then the pandemic hit of course and I I, I did get furloughed for um for three months and and, and being the person I, I could have just sat and watched telly eating pizza all day, um, but I didn't. So I, I started to run, which um, really was not great for somebody with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. Um, give it a go if you want to, but <laughs> I, I did. I did. Um, I, I did it for a few months, and then I suddenly thought, Do you know what? This is really not doing my my fibromyalgia any good at all right. so um I discovered yoga um yeah. just for a, a random Facebook post this this post came up with all the ana anatomical pictures of what yoga does for you and I couldn't do a single one <laughs> <laughs> you know it was like good lord I can't I can't I can't do a single one of these so right that's what I'm going to do then I'm going to make it my mission to be able to do those photographs i'd like to point out that i, st I still can't <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I, but i am closer to them yeah than i was in the beginning i mean i couldn't even bend forward yeah. you know i mean i couldn't even touch my toes um so really and truly it's kind of it it's evolved from that and yeah it it sounds like you you were able to set yourself a goal that had a, a, a lot of meaning for you. And when you got some success with that, you started to, to really believe that you could um, make better changes by taking better care of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I kind of missed picking up on earlier the fact that you right right at the start chose purpose yes. as your as as your way to live your life. Yes. In having a job rather than a, a, a social life, although you've you have found some balance 
through the years. So tell me a little bit about um, what purpose means to you now. Um, what does purpose mean to me now? It's a good question. I, purpose for me is just um, my family really is mm -hmm. to, it, it is um, I'm actually I, I, I'm driven to do what I do because obviously I I will get on to I've started a business and so on and so forth. And it really is I'm, I, I want to be able to look after my parents and look after my brother and my little nephew and my, you know, I just I just um, I know it sounds all mushy, but it really is. I, my, my purpose is them foremost. And the other thing is, is to because I've loved my journey in becoming. I'm not not, you know, he, healthier. <laughs> you know, I love the fact that I've now got a resting heart rate of 63, which is about as healthy wow. as I can possibly have a health, <laughs> a, a resting heart rate for. It used to be 90 something. So that it shows you how um, my health has improved. Um, and because I've benefited from that, I want to teach others that they can as well. Yeah. Um, you can know, just jump in for a sec. Because yeah, cool. you did mention mushiness. Yeah. But I, I want to re reframe that into love because I think purpose does come from a sense of love and 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 also in the same same terms of helping people because of what you've experienced in your journey getting healthier feeling better that is a very loving purpose as well so i i no shame in mushiness it's love it's a good thing yes yeah definitely <laughs> yeah definitely okay. Sorry, sorry that I interrupted you. Was no, no, really that, wanna... that's fine. I kind of, I, I was kind of rambling. I think anyway. <laughs> you know, it, it's, um, it is. I have, I have a lot of love in my heart, and I, and again, I've, I've over the years, I've, I've practiced Reiki. I'm, uh, I don't know if you know the author Louise Hay. Um, I trained as a, um, as a Louise Hay instructor and life coach. Um. I'm a beauty therapist, massage therapist. I've got so many things. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, I've kind of always been driven to um, do this kind of care for other people. I was out of alignment though, because I wasn't caring for myself. Yes. <laughs> and I find, I, you know, so, so, you know, this four stone, I actually was a chain smoker, four stone chain smoker who sat quite happily and ate a family sized block of cheese in two days, was trying to promote health and self care to um, all these wonderful people who who did come and see me. Um, but I wasn't living what I was trying to teach. Yeah. Um, so um, I now feel that I'm actually aligned yeah. In the fact that I, I can actually now go out to people and say, I can teach you this because I've done it myself. Yeah. It's kind of, um, that's where I'm at. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just wondering if there was, um, if there was a turning point, I know that part of the turning point was the success you had with losing weight, but I'm just wondering if there was a turning point in terms of valuing yourself enough to want to to get that balance and not just follow the drive but be well as well yeah I, I, I to be put it's all tied up with the losing weight yeah. um the, the uh, my mum always used to say there's a skinny person inside of you just dying to get out <laughs> and I think when she did come out I actually discovered who I am mm -hmm. um and as I said I've never tried I've never allowed myself to be de sort of defined by by the chronic fatigue um 
but carrying that extra weight and doing all the unhealthy lifestyle I was kind of pushing myself into that and I and I think what I had to do was a, a lot of a lot of the weight and everything was fear of who I actually am right. yeah, there's a there's a there's a quite a strong driven person inside yeah. me who um I, I sometimes actually find a little bit scary <laughs> you know it's like tiny did that come out of me um and I think and I think a lot of where I was was self-preservation protecting myself um and for whatever reason at that point in my life I was ready to actually embrace who I truly am yeah um no and 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 Again, I'm rambling. Sorry, but I just I, want to jump. I'm just jump ready, in there. To, ready to be who I truly am. Yeah, it it sounds like you have a lot of compassion for where you were, um, and I think that's incredibly important. That we recognise that when things are holding us back, there are reasons for it, and and for you, that was fear of becoming who you are, yeah. and then you managed to take steps and find that who you really are is a wonderful person to be yes yes <laughs> and um so I want to I want to bring it now into the now mm-hmm. and talk about um how you what's your chosen purpose now and perhaps you could tell me a little bit, bit about the business you're running yeah I can so um as part as uh, through part of the the journey into into yoga um I started seeing all the changes in my body but having lost four stone it it takes toll on on your face um and I kept looking in the mirror and I kept seeing the extra flesh and and the puffiness and and everything so a little bit investig of investigation introduced me to face yoga mm-hmm. um and that's great. It was doing the exercises and following the YouTube videos and everything. And then I decided I liked it enough to actually do a proper course in it. And when you actually learn what face yoga is, it isn't just face exercises. It's a complete health lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, because everything in your face, well, if you think, no, let's put it the other way, everything that's happening in your body reflects in your face yeah. and your face is the one thing you show the world every single day you can't escape that so what you put in your body how you move your body how you sleep how you feel how you think um is all in your face my little slogan is it's all in a face mm-hmm. um so um Okay, it's taken me on another journey into a different way of looking at my health. Um, and some people will call it vanity, you know, but if my face is glowing and projecting something out into the world, then I know I'm in a good place. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so, and people, you know, I've had some people saying, well, you constantly looking in a mirror it's because I'm doing constantly doing an exercise of some (laughs) description um and I just find it so exciting you know I I, I get really excited about faith yoga and for all the things that I've done the reiki the massage and everything I can incorporate it all into this beautiful face yoga philosophy um and I just want to share it with everyone. And, and that's where In the Glow Face Yoga came from. Um, I love that. I, I'd just like to mention that um, when that, that sense of when everything in your life comes together to a point where it just has it brings you so much joy and so much meaning, that, that to me is the beautiful definition of finding your life's purpose <laughs> well even talking about it I don't know whether you can I, I'm so excited just talking about it and I hope that actually comes across to people yeah. um, because I truly in this moment finally know that I've found my life's purpose mm-hmm. for my own health yeah 
and hopefully to take other people on that journey with me. Yeah. So I, I'm going to, I, I want to ask a slightly challenging question because for somebody like me, where well, my, my energy is very, very limited, I really like the idea of face yoga. Um, partly because my face has changed a lot since the menopause and I, I, I quite like the, the vanity side of it. <laughs> I, but I'm also, I'm, I really enjoy yoga myself, although I only do a very gentle, gentle um, routine. But I, I often find that things, there's, there's things, I have to have prioritized what I, I do for my well-being. And I've, things like things for my face are often at the end of my priorities. So is there anything you could say that would put face yoga slightly higher up or up the list of priorities? Yes, because you don't actually have to set a specific time for face yoga. You can, you know, I mean, it's for, for me, the first thing I, I, I get on my, I have um, a non-negotiable, which is it doesn't matter how I'm feeling, I have to get on my yoga mat in the morning. Um, even if it's just to, to lay in child's pose for 10 minutes, right? It is a non-negotiable. My mat is actually laying out here on the floor because I, I did my yoga just before I, I started chatting to you. Um, but it's a non-negotiable. So for me, I do a short face yoga routine when I get on my mat and then I do that. But, you know, as, as a face yoga instructor, therapist, you'd, you'd kind of think that that was what I would do. However, for people who haven't got the time to do that, you can literally do face yoga throughout the day. Yeah. So, for example, um, when you're putting your mascara on, have I got a mascara here just to sort of demonstrate it? So there's a, a pose called the big O. So you would literally just pull your face into that. So you wrap your lips around your teeth and you make an O shape. Put your mascara on. Mm -hmm. You've done a face yoga pose. Yeah. Um, you can, uh, the, the one of the things I always say, every time you go for a wee, mm -hmm. you're sitting in a room all on your own. Nobody can look at you. You can pull a face yoga pose. A great one for the 11 lines is, again, to pull in that O face. But then you take your hands and you literally just gently stretch your forehead. And you can do that. So, so there's 85 different face yoga poses. Mm -hmm. And you can do those all day. When, when, sometimes when I'm washing up, I'll do the tongue, uh, the, the tongue twister, which is you put your tongue inside uh, your lip. Mm -hmm. And you just circle it around. Um, so all of these things taking no time at all. Mm -hmm. Um, just incorporate them in your day. The other thing is, is if you're cleansing your skin, just give your skin a little massage when you put your moisturizer on. Yeah. And it's as simple as that to Fabulous. just take a few seconds to make your face your priority. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And, and, and in doing so, you are having an overall impact on your well-being as well. Yeah. Yeah, because it kind of, went, went, you know, you kind of think, oh, I'm going to do a little face yoga pose. And you say, well, I'll just stand up straight. You know, as you know, with, with chronic fatigue, we tend to sit like that a lot. I've just noticed that I am sitting <laughs> quite hunched forward. And it just makes me think, right, I'm going to do the tongue twister. So I'm just going to sit up and do my tongue, you know, yeah. and kind of, it just makes you think about everything, your body, yeah. you know, how, how again you know how you move how you stand 
yeah reflected in your face fabulous so it's it's the way it's connected to everything mm -hmm. yeah it's a reminder when you do an exercise that this is your whole body system yes yeah exactly so um i'd like to draw things to a close now jackie so perhaps you could is it Jackie rather than Jacqueline? I don't. I I, I, I really <laughs> don't mind. My uh, my my niece calls me Joof. Don't go there. <laughs> I, I respond to many names. I don't mind. <laughs> so, so can you tell me about? Um, you have a Facebook page, and uh, I believe that you have a membership program coming up as well at some point. I do. Right. So um, at the moment, if um, anybody wants to find me, I do have a business page on Facebook, which is in the Glow Face Yoga. Um, I also have a private group for anybody who wants to sort of explore face yoga a little bit more, which is the Glow Club. Um, and you can find that on the page. Um, and um, the membership is coming. So what that will be will um there will be various programs that work on specific areas of the face um, and then you can mix and match those programs to create your own kind of facial practice there'll be live classes there'll be um new videos added every month there'll be guest speakers there'll be you know i've, I've got so many plans um but I hope to um, bring that to the world later on this summer. Um, so watch this space. But at the moment, if you want to do face yoga with me, by all means, come and join the Glow Club. Um, and I also do a monthly class on Zoom. Um, so you don't even have to travel. You can do it all safely from your own home. Um, and again, details of that are on my, my website, www. I'll share all your links with this. Yeah. Sorry. I, I oh, that's all right. Don't, 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 just uh, tell me about your website again. Your so website is www.intheglowfaceyoga.com. In the Glow Face Yoga. Fabulous. And I will share the links with um, with this when, when, I, when I post it. Lovely. It's been an absolute joy talking to you, Jackie. Oh, thank, thank you for joining me and thank you for sharing um, your experiences and your story about purpose. I think it's a, it, it was great to hear. Well, if it just helps even one person, um, you know, then, then I'm, I'm pleased to have helped. <laughs> Of course it will. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank Take you. care, Jackie. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah,